So thank you for introducing me. Uh, I am not sure if I am uh, the best speaker uh, about the uh, history of science, because I am not a historian, I am a physicist dealing with uh, uh, nuclear radiation physics. Uh, but anyhow, accept please this presentation uh, as a work uh, of uh, amateur who uh, likes Prague uh, and is proud of uh, its uh, scientific history. So, I think uh, that uh, it might be useful uh, to start uh, this uh, uh, Doppler and Prague uh, in uh, a bit wider context because Prague uh, is one of the oldest uh, cultural centers uh, in the Central Europe. Uh, this more or less started uh, by uh, founding uh, of uh, the uh, university uh, in 1348 uh, by the Emperor Charles IV. The uh, university was modeled uh, on the uh, Paris and uh, Bologna Studia Generalia, this means uh, universities. Uh, and uh, uh, from 1356, uh, uh, also astronomy and geometry of the sphere were read in the similar extension uh, as uh, at the Paris University. <coughs> uh, in 1368, uh, uh, medieval kinematics uh, was brought uh, from Oxford uh, by Johannes de Olandria. Uh, so you can see that uh, not only uh, theology and law and so, but also uh, some natural science, <coughs> sciences were brought there uh, even uh, in the 14th century. Uh, the first half of uh, the 14th century is connected from the scientific point of view, especially with the names of Krzysztof uh, uh, from Prachatice and uh, Jan Andrzejów, uh, who uh, concerned uh, to the astronomy, study of planetary motions, and uh, especially uh, the astronomical tables uh, of uh, Jan Andreev uh, were greatly appreciated uh, even by Tycho Brahe so late as, uh, end, as uh, at the end of the 16th century. Uh, astronomical observation uh, of stars and comets uh, were carried out also by Tadeusz Haiku uh, uh, and uh, in 1599 uh, astronomy in Prague was enforced uh, by arrival of very renowned uh, in the time Danish astronomer Tycho Brahe, uh, who arrived uh, at the invitation of the Emperor uh, Rudolf II, uh, who uh, made Prague uh, his capital, capital of uh, the Holy Roman Empire. Uh, but unfortunately, Tycho Brahe uh, died uh, quite soon in 1601. Uh, nevertheless, he invited his uh, renowned uh, colleague Johannes Kepler. Uh, he came uh, to Prague in, six, in uh, the year 1600 uh, and uh, worked there for 12 years. And after long calculations, he discovered in Prague his first two of uh, the three you know, famous Kepler laws. But another outstanding personality that was Jan Marcus Mar uh, Marcy uh, from Groenland, uh, who was physician, but also physicist and astronomer. Uh, and uh, he dealt with systematic studies of impact of bodies, dispersion of light, measurements of, uh, of uh, geographical longitude, which means uh, that uh, uh, such uh, tradition of uh, uh, sciences in Prague uh, continued uh, and uh, uh, was uh, also enforced uh, by uh, founding of the Prague Polytechnic. Uh, history, at least first uh, 100 years of Prague Polytechnic uh, is uh, uh, not so glorious. Uh, in 1705, 
Christian Josef Willenberg, uh, who was former soldier, and he was uh, expert on fortifications, uh, asked uh, the Emperor Leopold I to allow him to educate six persons from the gentry, four from the knightly families, and two from vulgar families uh, in the engineering arts. He was uh, strongly influenced by uh, the French fortification uh, art, uh, and uh, of course, uh, this was uh, uh, very well acceptable uh, from the point of needs of the beginning of uh, 18th century. Uh, in 1707, on the 18th January, uh, Emperor Joseph I sent a rescript uh, to uh, the Czech uh, parliamentary commissioners uh, uh, in which uh, he consented to Wernberg's proposal and he instructed them uh, to take action, which means also uh, to finance this new school. And this was a problem. Nevertheless, this date 18th January of 1707 uh, is understood as the date of founding of uh, the Prague Polytechnic. Only in uh, 1760, uh, since the Czech estates uh, hadn't uh, reacted to the rescript, uh, Willenberg resubmitted this application both to the emperor uh, and uh, to the Czech estates. And in 1717, by the decree uh, of uh, Czech estates uh, from November 9th, uh, a professor's position was set up and Willenberg was appointed uh, as uh, the first professor of this new school. Uh, through uh, the whole 18th century, uh, this was a relatively small school uh, with few tens of students. Uh, but in 1798, after a review of public schooling, Franz Josef Gerstner, who was university professor of mathematics, submitted a proposal uh, to establish a technical university technical university, uh, which would be based on the model of the Apple Polytechnic in Paris, which means uh, that uh, engineering sciences uh, were intended to be closely linked with the study of mathematics and physics and uh, the other exact sciences. And in, in 1803, in March, Emperor Franz II signed a degree uh, on establishing a polytechnic institute of the Czech estates. And classes in this new polytechnic began uh, in November 1806, and uh, Franz Josef Gerstner was appointed as a director of this new institute. So these were the beginnings of uh, the school uh, to which before the mid the century, uh, Christian Doppler uh, came. How Prague looked in times of Christian Doppler? Uh, during the first half of uh, the 19th century, it was a very rapidly developing uh, city, from the city of provincial character, which was created by merge of four medieval towns, closely related, uh, in 1784, and uh, they were merged together with the adjacent agglomeration. Uh, Prague became a modern industrial city. And the development uh, is uh, characterized by emerging industry, emerging culture, especially classicism, and by the Czech national revival. Uh, population uh, before the mid-19th century uh, was estimated uh, to uh, 110,000, uh, but this number has quite large uncertainty. And here you see uh, 
uh, how Prague looked in the mid-century. This is uh, uh, the drawing uh, of uh, Sandman from 1840. You see the Charles Bridge, the castle, uh, which uh, the St. Peter's Cathedral was small in the time. It was, this building was finished only at the beginning of the 20th century. The tower uh, bridges, Church of St. Nicholas. And so if you arrive to Prague, uh, you see similarly uh, the same view, however, uh, included uh, in the more modern city infrastructure. Well, so Doppler uh, in uh, the 30s of uh, 19th century uh, had uh, some problems uh, when he looked uh, for permanent employment. He applied uh, in uh, many schools, Linz, Salzburg, Gorizia, Ljubljana, Vienna, Zurich, also in Prague. And he even asked uh, uh, the American consul in Munich uh, about the chance uh, to immigrate and to find a teaching job in uh, America. However, in 1835, uh, he was offered in parallel uh, two uh, teaching jobs, one uh, in Bern and the other in Prague. And he selected Prague as a teacher in the secondary uh, technical school and uh, he commenced his duty as a teacher of elementary mathematics in March 1835. As Professor Hoffman uh, told, uh, he returned uh, to Salzburg to marry Mathilde Sturm. You see here similar portrait, portrait as he had, however I have it in color. <laughs> and, uh, 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 they later had five children, all uh, born during his stay, uh, or their stay uh, in Prague. In 1837, he assumed duties as a professor in practical uh, geometry and elementary mathematics at the Polytechnic in Prague. Uh, in 1840, uh, he was elected uh, an associate member <coughs> of the Royal Bohemian Society of Sciences is quite close ballot, seven for and five against. And uh, in 1841, uh, he was formally appointed as a full-time professor uh, in the Prague Polytechnic. So now we are coming uh, to uh, the main highlight of his stay in Prague because in 1842 he gave a lecture to the Royal Bohemian Society of Sciences and published his most notable work. Sorry for my German pronunciation. Über das farbige Licht der Doppelsterne und einiger anderer Sterne des Himmels. This was the work uh, where uh, he explained the Doppler principle or used the Doppler principle uh, for uh, the light of uh, the sterns. Uh, and uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, the problem was uh, that Doppler was theoretical. He wasn't an experimental uh, scientist. Uh, and uh, you know, to confirm uh, this uh, conclusion theoretically found uh, by uh, Doppler was impossible uh, in uh, that time. So uh, this called for wide discussion. Uh, however, uh, later it was confirmed, I will talk about it, uh, uh, and I have uh, some comment on one of the next slides. Anyhow, 
1843, he was elected as an ordinary member of the society, the uh, Royal Society of Sciences, uh, and uh, uh, the ballot was much better. Uh, the ballot was nine votes for uh, and only one uh, vote against. In 1846, uh, he published uh, a revised edition of his principle, uh, and uh, I personally think uh, that uh, uh, that was work uh, that if in uh, that time uh, Nobel Prize uh, exists, uh, so it was work uh, for Nobel Prize. Unfortunately, uh, it was uh, established uh, nearly uh, 60 years later. Uh, unfortunately, uh, he had some health problems. And uh, uh, the, these problems uh, pushed him uh, to find some other job uh, where uh, he uh, would um, uh, need it uh, to teach so intensively uh, and uh, uh, didn't uh, Maybe he looked for a uh, more healthy environment uh, than uh, Prague was in that time. So in 1847, he left Prague for the professorship of mathematics, physics, and mechanics uh, at the Academy of Mines and Forests in Batska Skarnica, or in German, Chemnitz, uh, in uh, uh, Slovakia. But in the same year, uh, he was appointed uh, as a deputy secretary of the Royal Bohemian Sci Society of Sciences. And one year later, uh, in 1848, he was elected uh, to ordinary membership of the Imperial Academy of Sciences in Vienna and was also awarded uh, an honorary doctorate from the University of Prague. This is today's shape uh, of uh, the Patriotic Hall Vlastenský Sal in Czech uh, of uh, Karolinum uh, of the building uh, where Doppler in uh, 1842 uh, gave uh, his uh, famous uh, lecture. <coughs> It is former library, and in the Doppler's time, it still was a library. Uh, however, uh, now it is used for the ceremonial uh, purposes uh, by the Charles University. And uh, Doppler's stay in Prague uh, is uh, reminded also uh, some, by some memorial plaques. Uh, uh, this is the memorial plaque on uh, the site of. Uh, the house uh, where he uh, lived uh, at the beginning of at the end of 30s and beginning of 40s. It is uh, uh, on the corner of uh, the Charles Square. The house doesn't exist uh, anymore, uh, and but uh, the uh, plaque uh, is was given to the uh, uh, new uh, building. Unfortunately, uh, with uh, uh, some error, the Czech inscription on it uh, says uh, that uh, in the house number four, uh, two, which stood here, the famous scholar Christian Doppler, the Czech version of uh, his uh, uh, first name is used here, professor of mathematics and practical geometry in Prague, lived and explored before publishing his world-famous principle in 1842, on which today's astrophysics is built. Born in 1803 in Salzburg, he died in 1854 in Venice. So this 1854 uh, is an error, which, however, doesn't appear only on this plaque, but also in some <coughs> publications. And another house uh, where he moved uh, and uh, lived there between 
1843 and 1847 uh, is in uh, the street Obecního uh, Dvora 7 and also uh, a memorial plaque uh, is uh, on uh, this house. Uh, this building uh, uh, inscription uh, that uh, he lived in this house in the years uh, 43, 1843 to 1847. This correct dates. It is possible to remind also uh, one uh, important uh, characteristics uh, of the Doppler's stay uh, in Prague. Uh, such uh, outstanding personality uh, in Prague science uh, in that time that was Bernard Bolzano, mathematician, uh, logician, philosopher, theologian. Uh, he was, by the way, Catholic priest. And uh, in 1841 uh, to 1848, he was secretary of the Royal Bohemian Society of, Scientists, of Sciences. And he was uh, a very good and close friend of Doppler. He was a bit older, as you see, uh, so he was also to some extent a patron of uh, uh, Doppler. Uh, and uh, he wrote about him. Uh, he supported him quite a lot, uh, and uh, uh, he wrote uh, about <coughs> uh, a few uh, texts uh, which are uh, very uh, important and uh, interesting. Uh, he, for instance, reviewed uh, the first paper which Doppler submitted uh, to the Royal Bohemian Society of Sciences in 1837. Uh, he recommended this paper, uh, this, this was paper uh, on uh, applied analysis. He recommended it for uh, publication uh, and uh, he commented then uh, Doppler uh, himself. Uh, in September 1939, uh, he uh, wrote, uh, Mr. Doppler has already demonstrated his very promising abilities to the scientific community uh, through his numerous published works in mathematics and physics. The expectations raised by uh, his rather two published works would multiply when one enters into personal acquaintance uh, with him. You are not only struck uh, by how many highly interesting and fruitful ideas in many areas of knowledge, that so young a scientist is able to produce, but you also convince yourself with the greatest pleasure that this exceptional spiritual power combines with an uh, amiable character, genuine in unaffected determination, and with the pure love of science and truth. And uh, in 1844 uh, he writes, Professor Doppler over several weeks has excited me with his ideas, the one more brilliant than the other. I must think about them day and night. And in 1847, pure love of science and truth, which rises high above the narrow-minded part of the spirit, as well as conceded in flexibility. Doppler uh, had also some uh, followers. Uh, let uh, me to mention at least two of those outstanding followers. Uh, one was Karel Kozyska. Ah, sorry. Uh, who was his pupil in Banská Štiavnica. Uh, then he moved uh, uh, to uh, Brno. Uh, and uh, when uh, Doppler uh, departed uh, to Vienna from Banská Štiavnica, uh, uh, he uh, arrived uh, in 1851 uh, to Prague and was appointed professor of elementary mathematics and practical geometry in the Prague Polytechnic, uh, which means 
that was the position uh, which was originally Doppler's position. And Ernst Mach, who was professor uh, not at the Polytechnic, but professor at the, the Prague University uh, in the years uh, 1867 uh, to 1895. And he continued uh, uh, with the findings of Christian Doppler uh, and uh, uh, works on uh, Doppler's principle regarding changes of, in the frequency of received wave uh, in approaching and distancing sources. And he proved this uh, experimentally uh, with the device he had constructed. So he demonstrated the validity of the Doppler's conclusions experimentally. Uh, he also drew attention uh, to the use of uh, uh, the Doppler principle uh, in astronomy uh, in determining uh, the velocity of the stars. What exists in Prague now? Uh, at uh, our university, uh, there is uh, uh, the Doppler Institute for Mathematical Physics and Applied Mathematics, which more or less uh, was Doppler's own discipline. Uh, of course, the scientific topics uh, are a bit more modern. Uh, you see the scientific topics here. It is mostly uh, quantum uh, physics uh, and uh, applications of uh, quantum physics. Uh, it is a joint uh, institution uh, by uh, our faculty, which means Faculty of Nuclear Sciences and Physical Engineering, uh, by the Nuclear Physics Institute of the Czech Academy of Sciences, uh, and by the pedagogical faculty of the University of Hradec Králové. It has 17 permanent members and uh, some variable number of uh, visiting professors, postdocs, and doctoral students. Uh, so this collaboration dates many years back, uh, uh, but uh, uh, the institute was established in 1993 as a platform how to develop the existing collaboration. Uh, Doppler's portrait uh, is also uh, among the portraits of uh, outstanding uh, personalities of uh, the Czech Technical University in Prague uh, on the main corridor of the, of the rector's office. Uh, you see it uh, here and uh, uh, only as a uh, interesting issue. Uh, this man uh, is Josef Lavka, uh, who is also uh, re somehow related to uh, today's uh, uh, Austria, uh, because uh, uh, he was architect and uh, master builder, uh, and uh, uh, he was also Magister Operis uh, in the building uh, of uh, Vienna uh, Opera. <coughs> Uh, you have here, I think, 16 students uh, from uh, the Christian Doppler Gymnasium, uh, which was established in uh, 1953 uh, by the merger of several high schools uh, and was awarded uh, the honorary name of Christian Doppler Grammar School on 1st January 1999. And here you see and can uh, read, uh, sorry, and can read uh, something about the programs uh, uh, of uh, this uh, school. Uh, I don't think that I need to read it for you. Uh, this is the building of uh, uh, this uh, gymnasium. Uh, he is located. Uh, just in the center uh, of uh, the city, uh, opposite, uh, across the river, opposite the National Theater. So somewhere here uh, you would find uh, the National Theater uh, in, uh, in Prague. Uh, what is important, uh, this is uh, that uh, it has uh, some uh, programs uh, 
uh, on mathematics and uh, uh, natural sciences and also some language programs and it has currently the status of the faculty school of the faculty of sciences of Charles University of the faculty of mathematics and physics of the Charles University and cooperates also with other universities and institutions including our university. Some photos from this school, from this gymnasium. Uh, this is the piece this is the best uh, of uh, Christian Doppler. Uh, it is a copy of the work of uh, the sculpture, the sculptor uh, Georg Leisek uh, from the Arcadic uh, Courtyard of the University <coughs> of Vienna. Uh, it is in the auditorium of uh, this uh, uh, Christian Doppler's gymnasium. Uh, and uh, this is uh, the relief uh, on the uh, main entrance entrance uh, staircase and some drawings of students of this school uh, with the team of Christian Doppler uh, which uh, were drawn uh, on the occasion of commemorating uh, 200th anniversary of birds and uh, 150th anniversary of death of uh, Christian Doppler and final monument which has the Czech races. Uh, this is uh, uh, in uh, 1984. Uh, there was uh, found a uh, uh, main belt binary asteroid with effective diameter uh, 7.91. Kilometers it was discovered in uh, August 28, 1984, uh, by uh, one of the prominent Czech uh, astronomers, Antoni Perkos, uh, and uh, uh, it was named after Christian Doppler in 1986. Uh, it is interesting also by the fact that, that there is a moon orbiting uh, around this asteroid uh, every two days, two hours and 48 minutes. Uh, this moon was found in 2013 uh, and uh, this is a fairly long orbital period of a moon uh, of an asteroid of this size. And here you see, I hope uh, that uh, it is uh, visible uh, uh, this is uh, the territory of Mars. Uh, here, the part uh, of uh, trajectory of Jupiter, and this is the trajectory of this asteroid, the planet. So, thank you for your attention.